In this video, I'm going to solve a question asking us to check for weak and strong axiom of revealed preference. The concept is fairly simple to understand and should not take a lot of time once you get the hang of it. This is the question. I got it from EconPort. The link for the website is in the description of the video. We are basically given three pairs of prices and consumption bundles. We are given P1 along with its consumption bundle X1, P2 and its consumption bundle X2, P3 and its consumption bundle X3. And we want to know if this data set violates WARP and SARP. Again, I have the prices over here in this column and the respective uh, corresponding bundles over here. Now we want to know how much does it cost for us to buy this bundle at this particular price. Um, you can calculate that using something of a dot product. All you have to do is multiply the price of whatever you have on the X component with whatever you have on the X component of the bundle, similarly for the Y and for the rest as well. So the total cost for bundle X1 at price P1 will come out to be, you have two into three plus three into one plus three into seven. So that's two into three, it's six, nine, and that's 21, so that's 30. So that's the cost of this bundle X1 at this price P1. Now I'll tell you where warp and sarp come in. So let's say instead of buying this bundle, you were buying this bundle X2 at the same price. So let's say in this case, your price for total cost for bundle two at price P1 comes out to be 25 or something. Now 25 is obviously less than 30, which is what it's costing you to get X1. So if you could buy X1, you could easily afford X2 as well, but then still you went ahead and to buy X1. That can only happen if you prefer this bundle X1 over X2, otherwise it doesn't make sense for you to shell out more money. And that's what we are going to be talking about when it comes to warp and SAR. And we have this table slash matrix over here, which is going to kind of visualize this process for us. So on the row side, I have the three price sets over here. I have P1, P2, P3, and on the columns, I have the respective bundles, X1, X2, X3. So these boxes will represent how much it costs for you to get this bundle, let's say X1, at a particular price, P1 in this case. So this box will just be what we have calculated over here, the cost of getting X1 at price P1. So that turns out to be 30. Similarly, we can calculate it for bundle X2 at price P1 as well. So the total cost will turn out to be, you multiply P1 with whatever you have on X2. So that will be two into seven plus three into three plus three into one. So that's just 14, 26, which is what we have over here as well. Let's do one more. So, Let's think about getting this bundle X3 at price P1. Again, P1 into whatever you have on X3. So that will be two into one plus three into seven plus three into three. That's nine, 11 and 21. So that turns out to be 32. So that's 32. Similarly, you can go ahead and fill up the rest of the boxes. I've already done that for you. Now, what does this row tell us? It tells us how much it will cost us to buy these three bundles at price P1. Now in the question, you're given that you're purchasing this bundle X1 at this price. So you're shelling out $30, which is this box over here. If you took a look at this box over here, this is the price you'll have to pay if you're purchasing bundle X2 at the same price, and that comes out to be only $26. So, you could have easily purchased this bundle at this price because it, we can say it's this bundle was available because it's costing you less, but you still went up ahead and bought this bundle X1. That tells us that the decision maker prefers this bundle X1 over bundle X2 
in textbooks it's often referred to as reveal preferred or sometimes even denoted, denoted by just r but i'm using this sign over here because it's kind of easier to visualize um, let's talk about x3 now now x3 is going to cost you 32 dollars and now there's not anything we can tell from this box over here because you're purchasing your bundle for 30 dollars and that doesn't tell us whether or not you'll have enough money to shell out 32 so this box in this case is inconclusive now let's move on to price p2 which is this row when it comes to price p2 you're purchasing the bundle x2 which is this case again you're shelling out 30 bucks um, let's take a look at x3 over here at price p2 x3 would have costed you only 26 dollars again but you went up ahead and purchased bundle x2 so that means you prefer this bundle x2 over x3 similarly what we had in our last case you can't conclude anything from this bundle x1 which is costing you more than how much you're paying for bundle x2 let's move on to price 3 at, at price 3 we are purchasing this bundle x3 again it's costing us 30 dollars can't conclude anything about x2 and this x1 bundle at price 3 is costing you only 26 dollars but you went up ahead and uh, for bundle x3 that means you prefer bundle x3 over x1 okay we're almost done now all we have to do is check for weak and strong axiom of reveal preference now for warp to hold all you have to do is make sure that the decision maker is not indifferent between any of these bundles so if you find out something like x1 prefer to x3 but you also have x2 prefer to x1 that would mean that the decision maker is indifferent between x1 and x2 and if we have something like that that means warp is being violated so let's go back to our table over there um, let's see if we have something like that in our case you have x1 prefer to x2 do you have x2 prefer to x1 you don't you have x2 prefer to x3 do you have x3 prefer to x2 you don't and you have x3 prefer to x1 as well and you don't have x1 prefer to x3 so that means warp is not being violated our data set actually satisfies warp so we can go ahead and give it a tick over there now to check for SARP, all you have to make sure is your data set is transitive so if you have something like let's say x1 prefer to x2 and you have something like x2 prefer to x3 that would imply you must have x1 prefer to x3 and if this property is being held that means your SARP is not being violated your data set is satisfying SARP let's check our table again uh, you have x1 prefer to x2 and you have x2 prefer to x3 so that should imply you should have x1 prefer to x3 but in our case we actually have x3 prefer to x1 we don't have x1 prefer to x3 that means transitivity is not being held in this case so this does violate sir all right that's all you need to know for warp you got to check for indifference for sir you got to check for transitivity hope you got around that i'll see you in the next one